This is episode 22 of the Joyful Movement Show, and today we're talking about the good girl syndrome, specifically how the socialization of women impacts our body image and relationship to food. This episode is a real eye-opener, so stay tuned. Hi there. Welcome to the Joyful Movement Show. I'm your host, Kim Hagel, mom, recovering dieter, and founder of Radiant Vitality Wellness. As a personal trainer with my own story of body acceptance, I've seen firsthand how diet culture influences the fitness industry and the damage it causes the women I work with, keeping them on the start, stop cycle, struggling to find motivation. It's now my mission to empower women to break free from torturous exercise, restrictive eating, and body shame. Stick with me and I'll help you discover what moves you so that you can tap into that burning motivation deep inside yourself and experience joyful movement, peace with food, and feel confident in your own skin. Are you ready? Let's lace up our runners, pop the earbuds in, and go for a walk while we chat. Well, hello there, friend. How are you doing? If you're listening to this in real time, it's the end of March and we're starting to see those signs of spring, at least here in this part of Canada where I live. The sun's been shining, the snow's all gone, and it's starting to feel more inviting to get out of the house and enjoy the outdoors. And at the same time, though, we are still living with this global pandemic and nothing's returned to normal just yet. It's actually been just over a full year since this whole thing started and maybe that feels a little heavy to you. So I ask again, how are you doing? I think it's really good to check in with ourselves from time to time and really assess how we're thinking and feeling about our current situation. If I can share personally a little bit of how I'm feeling right now, I was reflecting and, you know, it was around this time last year that I relaunched my business, uh, March 11th to be specific. And I distinctly remember announcing my opening and then hearing our prime minister issue a stay at home order the very same day. And it was so crazy at the time. I mean, I had left my job to go chase my dream, not even really clear of my vision for my business. And before I even got it off the ground here, I was having to pivot. It was really scary. I didn't have a plan B. I mean, if we're being honest, I didn't really even know what plan A was, truthfully. But sometimes that's the greatest gift because then you've got no choice but to figure things out. So fortunately, I was able to access some support from our government, and that gave me a little breathing room where I could really sit and think about what it was I really wanted to do, how I wanted to serve the world in this new reality that we're facing And somewhere in all of that, I discovered this podcast called the Beyond the Food Show. And the host, Stephanie Doje, talked all about diet culture and body image. And I mean, it just kind of blew my mind. Like I I didn't even know the word diet culture at that time. But when she talked, I felt like she was speaking right to me. Like all those struggles I'd had for my whole life trying to control my weight chasing health in the form of thinness, yo-yoing, cycling from one thing to another, obsessing over food, exercise, and the scale. I mean, it was was just mind-blowing. And her words made me realize, number one, that I wasn't alone, and two, that it wasn't my fault. She explained this to me in a way that made sense. So shortly after that, I realized that she also had a podcast for non-diet professionals and I ate that up too. Like I said, I wasn't even familiar with diet culture. So up to that point, I hadn't even considered how diet culture influenced the fitness industry and how it disempowers women. But once my eyes were open, I just couldn't turn back. I knew that this was the missing piece in my work. I finally understood why my clients had so much struggle with willpower motivation and accountability. And it's because they, me, we were equating movement with torture, whose only purpose was to control or shrink our body. And I knew I didn't want to operate that way anymore. So that's what led me into the non-diet professional mentorship program with Stephanie, where with her support and her challenging me and pushing me way outside my comfort zone, I rebranded my whole business. And that's what got me started doing the work that I do, like this show. I mean, it's kind of crazy when I look back on the last year and not even knowing what I wanted to do to now being here talking to you on this podcast and coaching women literally all over the world. 
I could not have predicted this, and I'm just so grateful for it. Now, all of that to say that I'm just so excited and honored to have my mentor, Stephanie Doje, with us here on the show today. I'll tell you a little bit more about her. Stephanie is a clinical nutritionist and intuitive eating expert and the host of the Beyond the Food show, whose integrative and comprehensive approach helps women take their lives back from diet culture. Her proprietary and countercultural approach, the Going Beyond the Food Method, has helped women in over 92 countries seek health beyond dieting. Stephanie was trained at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition here in Canada and has a degree in health science. So I invited Stephanie on today to talk about one of the topics that first drew me into her work, the good girl syndrome, and specifically how we are socialized as women to think, look, and act a certain way. In this episode, Stephanie will teach us how the good girl syndrome, as she calls it, operates to keep women small and preoccupied with their bodies, trying to fit in and out of the life they dream of. You'll learn the roots of the system of injustice and gain insight into how the good girl syndrome shows up in your life. Dismantling our beliefs about who we are as women is key to discovering food and body freedom. And when we do this mindset work, it opens doors in every area of our life, which is why Stephanie's work is called Going Beyond the Food. This is a really empowering episode, and it will help you see that your struggles aren't your fault. Listen in and learn how you've been set up to struggle and how you can break free once and for all. Now, I don't want to give it all away, so I'm just going to turn it over to Stephanie right now. Well, welcome, Stephanie. I am so excited to have you here on the Joyful Movement show with me today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an honor for me to be here. Well, it's an honor for me too. And I was saying to my listeners in the intro, how privileged I am to have my mentor here with us today, the woman who taught me everything I know to come and share just a, just a small taste of all of the wisdom that you have with, with my listeners. So I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, you're welcome, but you knew a lot before coming to me. I just like (laughs) polished it off. Oh yeah, (laughs) that's good. I like how that sounds. So why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and how you ended up doing the work that you do? Absolutely. So um, I'm a clinical nutritionist. It's my second career. Let's start there. I've been doing this for, it's going to be close to 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I was in the corporate world for close to 15 years in the retail industry. Mm -hmm. And I uh, abused my body, got really sick. Mm -hmm. And on the path of healing myself and and finding solutions for my health issue, I discovered the world of alternative health, which sent me down a spiral of disordered eating Mm -hmm. um because pause we have to understand that i also was a chronic dieter i was introduced to dieting at the age of 12 and my whole life has been that up to the age of about 40 um and the studying and being into the world of natural health made it worse And that's when I discovered that there was a way of healing the way of health that didn't have to do with restriction. So that's Mm. how I came to do the work in the non-diet approach and beyond the food. And for the last year and a half now, I'm also training professional like you in the non-diet world to learn the non-diet approach because there's really almost no program teaching that. Yeah. Um, And then building a business from there. Amazing. Well, as I was saying, you are uh, an expert in many areas, but I think one of the things that drew me to you way back when we first started working together was how confident you are in your your feminine power. You have Mm. um, some really interesting feminist views that I'm really um, interested in. And way back, I heard you, I I listened to a podcast that you recorded about the good girl syndrome, and it really spoke to me. So I was wondering if you could share with our listeners, what exactly is the good girl syndrome? Absolutely. I just want to perhaps take a minute to share how I came, like, what is the link between Mm. feminism and the non-diet approach or diet culture or dieting, right? Yes. 
So I'm a very curious person of nature and very science driven. And so it's always for me, like trying to find the mechanism, trying to find the, how things happen. And the mm -hmm. more that I went down the path of like weight neutral approach, non-diet approach, intuitive eating, I'm like, there's more, there's mm -hmm. more, there's mm -hmm. more. And I kept digging and digging and digging and realizing that the reason why in like the reason why diet culture exists as a whole mm -hmm. is because of system of injustice. Uh -huh. Primarily here, we're talking about uh, patriarchy. Yeah. We're talking about white supremacy, these system, this, these institution of injustice that as a society, we have co-opted unwillingly mm -hmm. uh, or willingly, depending on your point of view. And it affects us in different aspects of our life. In the case of women, the ideology or the system that was put in place to control women, because we live in a society that's that's made for men. That's what we yeah. call a patriarchal society, right? The society yeah. that puts men in a place of power and to yeah sustain that as women became more and more in their power. So we have to understand that since the late 1800, women have claimed their power mm -hmm. from economical power and political and so forth. And now we're like, there's very little rules in the rule book and the legal system that stops women from getting anything. Uh-huh. So as this uprising or this, the, this space where women claim their power, patriarchal system had to put in something else to oppress and suppress women. Uh -huh. And that's how diet culture was born. Yeah. Now, this is where good girl syndrome comes in. So when you look at diet culture, thinner is better. When you look at that plainly and logically, you're like, eh, no. It's like, it doesn't make sense, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like <clears throat> racism, like white is better than black. Like it doesn't make sense logically. No. So <clears throat> in order for people in a system to adhere to these principles, you have to create what we call cognitive distortion. Uh -huh. And that's how good girl came in. What I call good girl syndrome is how we socialize women very young mm -hmm. to be a certain way, to act a certain way, to have certain trait of personality, certain ways of thinking in order for us as we grow up to chase the 10 ideal, to partake into dieting, to partake and believe it that we need to wear makeup, we need to be quiet, we need to not take space. We need to do everything in our power to adhere to the norm. That's what the good girl syndrome is, right? It's to be yeah. reasonable. Right. We develop a way of being that lands us to be the perfect candidate to fall victim to diet culture. Uh -huh. So then how does buying into the good girl syndrome impact how we relate to food in our body specifically? So we don't buy into it. We do it completely unconsciously. So uh -huh. good point. We are socialized. So there's two terms that two ways in engaging into our brain or to our ways of thinking that people or women need to understand. We are socialized. So what socialization means is that when our brain is developing from the age of zero to 15, like the human brain isn't born complete. Yeah. It's kind of an like a, a, a blank hard drive mm -hmm. that we have. And then the role of our family of origin is to put data point in there, right? To put yeah. information. Mm -hmm. That's what we call socialization. So our family, our school system, society builds in thoughts and belief system into our brain. We socialize our children based on our culture. That's mm -hmm. why when you open yourself and travel the world, you realize there's different ways of living Yeah, because there's different socialization. So we don't buy into it. We're socialized into it mm -hmm. and we think it's the truth. Yeah. So we think that thinner is better 
the moment we get a Barbie doll, right? The, with the tiny waist and like, mm -hmm. we think it's like the way and then we get a doll and it looks the same way. And then we look at characters on TV and they're all thin and they're all white and they're all blonde and they all have blue eyes, right? You're like, okay, yeah. that's the norm. Yeah, it's all so we see. It, that's all we know, that's all we see. So we internalize this socialization and it becomes a truth, a belief oh, system. Oh, oh. And unless we challenge that belief system, which we don't know is an option, we don't think it's an yeah. option to believe that thinner is better. Yeah. Until, like me, at 39 years old, somebody tells me it's not true. <laughs> and the first thing you do is like, what the heck? Like, oh, what do you mean yeah. it's not true? Like, I spent I don't know, 30 years believing that, yep. prove me that it's not true, right? And that's the whole recovering from diet culture where we have mm -hmm. to dismantle all these belief system. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where we started, but it's very important to understand that it's not something we buy into. It's something that is imposed to us, mm -hmm. but that we need to actively engage into changing, Mm -hmm. otherwise we'll stay stuck forever with thinner is better yeah yeah and diet culture yeah and racism or whatever the, the social justice institution you're trying to dismantle mm -hmm. it was like you say I, I'm similar age to you and it wasn't till I was close to, well over 40 I guess when I realized I didn't even know what diet culture was let alone these systems of patriarchy and racism that were the root of mm -hmm. it all and once I did I was like oh wow like and then all this choice is available to you right because you just yeah. like you say accept these things as fact like we're socialized to believe them and I, I didn't even realize there was an alternative way of thinking but so well it's the same thing that happened in your audience like if you look at the fitness world yeah like most of us have been bored in the in the decades of aerobics and mm -hmm. working hard and like doing one hour workout session and being out of breath and sweating. Yeah. You have to remember that like 70 years ago, seven zero, you would have said to like in the 1940s, you would have said to your <laughs> friend, I'm going for a run. They would have said, what? Why? No, not even why. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. You're going for what? <laughs> like it didn't exist. It didn't compute in people's mind running. No. Yeah. Like there's nobody chasing you. Why are you running? Yeah. Right, Bec but we have never known anything else. So it's a exactly. belief that we must work out, we must sweat, it must be an hour, and it must be all these things. Yeah, it's the exact same thing as thin is better. Yeah, it's just a belief that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so can you help our listeners to identify um, some red flags? Like, how might they know that the good girl syndrome is present in their life? Oh. Okay, so if you want well, that very simple fact, if you've been raised around Barbie dolls and dolls and dressing up dolls as a girl, you're likely are started very young being socialized into beauty is very important and tenor is better, right? Mm -hmm. If you are someone as an adult who is always trying to be reasonable, mm -hmm at work, at home, you're trying to like, make sure that you're reasonable, you're not demanding for too much, you're meeting people's expectation, everybody gets along. Yeah, that's a good girl syndrome. Uh -huh. um, you're afraid of making mistakes. Mm. Because making mistakes or failure means that you're not smart. Yeah. Um, you always aim if you're like in school, perhaps you're aiming to have good grades. When you're working, you're aiming to have a good evaluation. If you're mm -hmm. in business, you want to have good business results. Like whatever the metric is, mm -hmm. you need to hit the high mark. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it means something about you. Yeah. Um, you, you want to be, for an example, creative, but not too much. Yeah. Because you don't want to create controversy right? Yes, because yes. controversy is not good because that means that you're working outside of the norm. Yes. Uh, you worry when you take an action, especially something that could be challenging the norm, you always go to the first place. What are people going to say? Yeah. 
right? So perhaps you're considering not dieting in the first place you go is what are people going to say? If I mm-hmm. gain weight, what are people going to think? Yes. Like you're worrying about other people's opinion because you've been told indirectly that your worth is associated with what other people think of yeah. you. I can relate to that one. As, as you know, and my listeners know, mm-hmm. I, I left the personal training industry for a couple of years because, you know, I undid all my beliefs about diet culture, but subsequently gained weight and thought, well, I don't fit here, right? Who am I to be a role model in the fitness industry if I don't fit that ideal fit body? If you're dieting, even mm-hmm. if you're not in the fitness world, if you're dieting because you believe that for you, thinner is better, that's the good deal syndrome. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. If you believe that you are 100% responsible for your health and you must work hard to be healthy, mm-hmm. like it has to come out at a cost of working hard, that's a good girl syndrome. Does that help? That helps a lot. Um, ever since I listened to that podcast, I think about this a lot. And I caught myself last week when my daughter was leaving the house going, just be a good girl. And I went, oh, yes. And then I said, forget I said that. (laughs) I did. (laughs) Go be a badass. (laughs) So can you tell our listeners what happens? What becomes available to you when you say hell no to being a good girl and decide to be a badass? I don't like the word badass. (laughs) Okay. Because it ex- it demands or it expects that if you're not a good right. girl, you're a badass. Can you just be a woman? Sure. Like, can we just be? Yeah. Without being the extreme, like, and often that's what scares people is like, well, I've been this all my life. Now you want me to be a badass? No, yeah. that's not me. Okay, I'm going to stay enough. over there. Can you just be a person living the human experience? I love that. So. So what becomes available? Everything that's available to the human, right? Mm. So freedom, um, demanding your worth into the world, right? Um, a, a big life, whatever big means to you. It doesn't mean being a badass, doesn't mean controversy, but what does it mean? Does it mean, I don't know, if you're like me, you're single, you're traveling. If you are have a family, you want to have four kids, not just two, a boy and a girl. You want to have four kids. <laughs> you want to go live on the farm because you love animals and you don't love society. Like you love to be on your own. That's a yeah. big life for you. Sure. So what becomes available is everywhere where you put yourself limits, those limits don't exist because remember, you're only putting limits to stay within the norms. Right. Uh, freedom around food, being in your body, not just being in any size body, but being in your body because you're not worried and always in your mind trying to manage other people. You're just mm-hmm. being in your body, yeah. being present with your life. Like it's all the thing that quote, I don't want to say normal, but the people, the people identify as men have naturally. So if you are in a, a, a men to woman relationship, look at how your partner lives his life. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. pretty much like what's available to you. <laughs> they just don't give an F, right? You're right. Like if, you, if you're a woman and you're going through the work with Kim about body image, one of the element is always to have a conversation with your partner. If you haven't yet the conversation, it is so like revealing when you ask your your partner if it's a it's a person who identifies a man like do you care about what i look they're like what yeah what, what do you mean what are you saying yeah. like you're just who you are like and then you'll say to them well do you care about how you look no right there's just an automatic for them yeah no and nor do we care about how they look right when we look at it that way i'm like well, yeah. why would he why would he feel any differently about me than i do about him exactly mm-hmm. So that's what becomes available, but it's not only that it's because to, to shed the good girl syndrome, you must do mindset work. Yeah. Because the good girl syndrome is all in your mind. Yes. I'm so glad you brought that up. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that you have a protocol for fitness, 
right? I don't know, you have tight hips. So Kim's gonna give you like five stretches. I saw a video of you today doing some stretching for something, right? Yep. Like there's a protocol to remove the tightness in the part of your body. Here's the thing you need to do. Like there's a protocol to change your belief system. That's what we yeah. call self-coaching. Yeah. At first, you may start around food and around body image, but what happens automatically is you start coaching yourself in everything else in life. Yeah, it's so cool. Right? That's when the magic happened because now mm -hmm. you're opening, you've opened food, you've opened the body image, you've opened your relationship to exercise, and now you start exporting that to everything else in your life, your career, your money, your business. Yeah. And then that's when you start claiming back your power everywhere Absolutely. else. Yeah. And you really start to see how food and body image and exercise is really just a distraction from all of those other things, as you exactly. say. Exactly. So it's, it's a amazing. starting point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, um, as we're wrapping up here, a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, how can our listeners connect with you if they want to learn more from you because you have so much expertise to share on this topic? So the, since we're on a podcast, the very mm -hmm. first place would be like to my podcast, right? Get out of this podcast when we're done, move <laughs> over and look going beyond the food on your podcast app yep. and then subscribe to the podcast and perhaps start with podcast 249. Great. which is a good girl syndrome, right? Yeah. It's going to be followed by, I'm going to tease people, the black outfit. Another Remember really that. good one. Yes, definitely <laughs> right? listen to that too. Uh -huh. It's another concept that I created to express what happened. So anyway, do that. And then if you want to work with me, mm -hmm. then the, the path to take is only one option, Conquer and Tribe. It's a coaching program that I have that covers that trifecta area of diet culture, mindset, food, and then body image. Uh -huh. And then you can come to my website, www.stephaniedoze.com slash work with me, or you'll see it work with me on my website. Yeah. yeah. Great. And if people are wanting to hear or go deeper on this topic, I'm really excited that you are going to be one of the yes. keynote speakers at Embrace Your Radiance, the online uh, non-diet virtual summit that I've got coming up in April. I, I guess that'll just be next week when this podcast airs. So uh, you'll be talking about wo women, food, and power. Yeah, so we're going to take a deep dive into this whole angle of how diet culture was born, how it intersect with feminism, how it intersect with racism, and all those social constructs. So I'm at that place in my own journey. So I teach from that space. Yeah. So I'm going to take you through this journey visually, because it's really impacting to see it visually. And also I'll teach about that. Fantastic. I am really looking forward to that. Uh, I know that uh, listeners, you would get a lot out of that conversation too. So please get your free pass for uh, Embrace Your Radiance so you can learn more from Stephanie and all the other speakers that are coming uh, to present at the summit. Stephanie, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, for educating my listeners. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure and just so much value. Thank you for your work, Kim. Well, did that get you thinking or what? I know for me, once I learned about the feminist and racist connection to diet culture, it was like this huge awakening, like, holy cow, it's not my fault. I'm not broken. And then from there, hell no, I am not subscribing to this nonsense anymore. No more playing small and trying to fit in. It just all made so much sense. All the struggles that I thought were about my body were about me trying to fit in. And once I let that go, so much freedom and choice became available. I realized how my obsession with the ideal was keeping me out of the life I dreamed of. And I just made a choice. I dove into the mindset work, redefined my values, beliefs, and my worth, and I'm so glad I did, because now I'm here and I'm helping all of you do the same. I have so much gratitude for Stephanie and all the other non-diet professionals I've had the pleasure of meeting along my journey. You heard Stephanie and I talk about Embrace Your Radiance at the end of the interview, and I really hope you'll grab your ticket if you haven't already. I put this event together with 10 amazing, inspiring professionals so that you could have access to the same mentorship and support that I had when I was unlearning diet culture. 
If you're ready to ditch the good girl syndrome and stop chasing some arbitrary ideal and step into your power, chasing health and vitality in your now body, then this event is a great first step. And you can grab your pass at on my website at www.radiantvitality.ca slash embrace your radiance. It's a 10 day event and it starts next Monday, April the 5th. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you would share it or leave a review. I'll see you back here next week, all by myself flying solo. We've had a lot of great interviews lately. All these amazing professionals that I wanted to introduce you to, but going forward, we'll go back to balancing the interviews out with the shows that are just me. Until next week, friends, thank you so much for being here, being part of this community. And remember that you can always um, check in with me on Instagram or Facebook or on my website, radiantvitality.ca. Until then, be well, my friends, and here is to your Radiant Vitality. Hey, before you go... I just want to tell you how grateful I am for you. It means the world to me that you're part of our Radiant Vitality community. I've got a free gift for you. Head on over to my website and download The Motivation Secret, the simple mindset shift that will get you off the start-stop cycle for good. The link is in the show notes. And hey, if you enjoy this podcast, the greatest gift you could give me is to leave a review or share this episode with a friend. Your shares and reviews help move our show up the rankings on the podcast directories so that it can be seen by more women just like you who are ready for something different with fitness. Bye for now, friend.